flipped classroom video for Maths A2 Unit 3 calculating definite integrals and areas. Definite integrals, well what are they and what's their notation? Well definite integrals give us values for areas, volumes and other quantities but we're only dealing with areas for now and if we want to find the area under a curve between two values in this case A and B in our diagram then for this situation we know that a function that will give us the area under the curve is big A of X which is the integral of F of X dx and to find the area bounded by the x-axis at the bottom the lines x equals a and x equals b on the left and the right and the function itself the green function at the top then the notation is a equals the integral between a and b of f of x dx and we calculate it by using our antiderivative of f or our integral indefinite integral of f and we calculate it at b and then we subtract it calculated at a and as is generally the case with maths the best way to illustrate this is to use an example so we're going to have a look at the area between 0 and 4 of x squared over 4 dx so that's what it looks like that's the familiar sort of x squared curve it's squashed down a bit by dividing it by 4 and first of all we need to find the antiderivative or integral of x squared over 4 so we'll use our procedure we start with x squared over 4 we add 1 to the power which gives us x cubed over 4 and then we divide by the new power so that means on the bottom now we've, we've already dividing by 4 but also we're now divided by 3 as well so that gives us x cubed over 4 times 3 or x cubed over 12 and now there's a new bit of notation so once we've found our antiderivative we put it in square brackets and we put the boundary values of 0 and 4 at the top and bottom like that so just to link it all together there's our integral so at the top goes the 4 at the bottom goes the 0 and inside the square brackets is the antiderivative of our function okay so then what do we do with that well what we do is we have the top number goes in to the function and then we subtract with the bottom number going in and in this case that's nice and easy 4 cubed is 64 so that's 64 over 12 uh, naught square naught squared naught cubed is naught um, so it's minus naught over 12 and that gives us 16 over 3 when we cancel down or 5.33 to two decimal places okay so this all looks jolly well does it really work well if it does work we would expect that if we had a function and we found the area between 0 and 4 then that would be the same as the area between 0 and 2 plus the area between 2 and 4 which is what that red equation tells us so we need to verify that that's the case okay so first of all looking at the first area which I've called a1 we're looking at between 0 and 2 for this function so we have our integral between 0 and 2 of x squared over 4 dx we put it in square brackets with the antiderivative inside or integral our boundaries are 0 and 2 pop them in 2 cubed over 12 minus 0 over 12 which is 8 over 12 which is 2 thirds we then want to work it out or the area out between 2 and 4 so similar job we now have between 2 and 4 for x squared over 4 dx and that's going to be x cubed over 12 in the square bracket with 2 at the bottom and 4 at the top and when we work that out we've got our 4 cubed over 12 take away 2 cubed over 12 which is 64 over 12 take away 8 over 12 which is 56 over 12 which is 14 over 3 okay and now we're going to add them so if we add those two together then 
that's going to give us our 2 thirds plus 14 thirds which is 16 thirds and this is of course equal to the value we had previously when we integrated between 0 and 4 4 x squared over 4 dx so it obviously works for that um, that doesn't prove it always works but I can assure you it does for everything you're going to be looking at so let's have another example a little bit more nasty quite a long and complicated polynomial there and we're going between a half and one rather than naught and four so x to the six integrates to x to the seven over seven minus four times x cubed integrated is x to the four over four plus four times x integrated is x squared over two and plus one and one integrated is x so we can cancel those fours the, on the next term the four and the two cancel to leave us with two on the top and of course that one we don't really need there so when you've got long integrals it's a good idea to put a bracket ready for putting the top value in the one in this case take away a bracket putting the second value in the bottom value 0.5 it's a common mistake to mess things up with the minus signs if you're not careful so by doing these brackets you will save yourself bother so now we put the value 1 into the function so x to the 7 over 7 begin, becomes 1 to the 7 over 7 x to the 4 becomes 1 to the 4 and so on in the second bracket we do the same thing but we we replace the x by 0.5 in each of the terms. Now you could use your calculator for this or you could do it in your head or however it doesn't really matter but the first bracket comes to 15 over 7 the second bracket if you could do this in your head then hats off to you um, I think most of us would use a calculator for that and we in fact get this crazy looking thing 841 over 896 and it would be fine if you use a decimal as long as you make sure to use plenty of decimal places until the end when you can round it off uh, to a suitable value. Okay, so if we do that subtraction we get 1079 over 896 and that equals 1.204 to three decimal places. And we can see a picture of this curve. Um, it would be unreasonable to expect pretty much any of us to sketch this. It's uh, a nasty looking thing but of course with GeoGebra or other dynamic software we can and in fact there is a function within GeoGebra where you can uh, do areas and it will tell you what the area is uh, and sure enough there it is 1.204 okay finally we're going to think about negative areas um, doesn't really make sense in a way negative areas areas an area is an area but we need to look at the question of what happens if an area is below the x-axis or below y equals naught. Um, so we'll use our previous example but flipped up. So instead of y equals x squared over 4 we've got y equals minus x squared over 4. So because it's a straight reflection we, we know what we expect this area to be. So let's just go through the process and have a look at what actually happens. So we have our square brackets and we have our integral in there so we've got our minus a quarter and then we've got x squared which integrates to x cubed over 3 which is quite familiar by now we put our two brackets in to make sure we don't mess up with minus signs so the first one gives us minus uh, 1 over 12 because of course the 4 times 3 is 12 and we've got our 4 in there for x so that's 4 cubed instead of x cubed and in the other bracket doesn't matter too much in this case about the negatives because we've got zero but it's still good practice to do those two brackets so when we tidy that up we get minus 16 over 3 which is negative what we got for this function when it was flipped up and above y equals zero so what that's telling us is that areas below the x-axis are negative um, and if we have an integral with some of the area above y equals 0 or the x-axis and some below then if we just want the 
absolute area in that case we need to split it into separate integrals and then we can. In fact the the fact that integrals are negative below the x-axis is very useful when we're using functions to model real situations.